WACP, the place to be, for we are creative people, and some place to be on a conference call with some very important people. Audience, would you believe we have live and direct Bishop James Ellaby on the line. He's back from his tour in Africa. How long were you there, Bishop? Uh, Three months plus. Three months plus. And also on the line, we have Reverend Lee. Can you give us your full name and something about you? And we will move to the next uh, statement because we have a lot of territory to cover on this conversation. This is a very vital uh, conversation in that we have not talked in over three months. So, um, Reverend Lee, come in. Yes, glad to be here uh, with you, Hassan, and with our other guests. Uh, I am Dr. Lee, Reverend Dr. Lee Barnes uh, from Dallas, Texas. I have spent many years in Africa traveling back and forth. Uh, By training, I am a chemist. I have a Ph.D. in chemistry uh, and have worked in industry and uh, most recently in government uh, doing community and economic development and uh, economic development financing for uh, major municipal and industrial projects. And uh, we're happy to be here to assist uh, Bishop Ellerby in the Promised Land Ventures in Africa. All right. Now, now Bishop Ellerby, um, I know you and our, our audience know you, but give us a little bit about your background before we get into this uh, dynamic discussion about Africa and the Promised Land Project. Well, to synopse it, I would say that I was born for this mission. Uh, Ever since I was about five years old, my mom and my dad had died, gone on the long journey, and my aunt, my dad's sister, took me in, and there were nine children in her family and five in our family, and I was the youngest of all. And to get away from them, thumping my head and pinching me and making me the play toy, I would go out into the woods and climb up in a tree, and I would see myself leading people home to Africa. So my childhood dreams have become the reality of my time. Wow. Now, I was on that journey back in 1989 when um, 19 African Americans journey to Africa. We went to Nigeria, a royal welcome. Um, Since then, a lot have gone on. Uh, We, WACP, put up a video recently, um, and we were talking with uh, Odidi, and he was explaining about uh, hosting a trip to to Africa. And uh, you met uh, Odidi in Nigeria. We'd like to know uh, where that whole situation is right now, and um, what are we doing in terms of moving forward on that? Well, right now we have basically shifted gear. The Cross River State, under Senator Governor Lau Imoki, he has been set down in a tribunal of five other five governors with him. And in order to come back into the governorship on February the 25th, there will be a re-election. If he wins that re-election, he will be reinstated as governor. But we, at the same time, had a great interest in the Aquibum State. Amazingly enough, the Aquibum State is nicknamed the Promised Land. And we believe that Dr. King's great pronouncement that we as a people will make it to the promised land. Amazingly enough, that's the only place on planet Earth that is actually called the promised land. So we believe the Aquibum State is our target. And Governor God's will of Fabio also believes that he is born to be the governor at the time that this great diasporan return is to be established. So so basically, there will be a dynamic return. It's just a matter of 
who will host us and when? I mean, is is this what we are understanding? Because in the video, um, o Odidi was explaining that uh, he was preparing to host um, up to 28 people and everything would be cared for and everything. Um, can you elaborate on that and, and also uh, tag it with what is happening now and how and the shift would um, what the shift has to do with what was set up uh, prior? Well, Odidi was a diaspora coordinator for the Cross River State where our initial project was to work with Governor Imoki. But our target at the same time was to first be accepted in letters. We have letters to back it up. I think you have it yes. in your archives that we wanted to go to a Quibum first because of its name, the Promised Land. And our prayers have been answered. So now, Odidi cannot be found. We're not able to communicate with him by email, right. by telephone, by text. That's right. But Governor God's will of Pabio is quite real and quite ready. So the shift is, we don't have time to play a political game or deal with any kind of game. We see the situation here in America. The winds are blowing, the fires are burning, the mm. water is falling, the earth is shaking, and it lets us know it's time to check out of Dodge. So we have to get ready because someone has to be the pioneers. Our forefathers used to say, get on board, little children. Hmm. There's room for many or more. Yes. Or the chariot's going to swing low and take us back home. Whatever the case is, we have to be in preparation. And that is why we are going to put lock, stock, and barrel in investment with Governor God's Will of Papio and the Aquibum State. So it looks like what we saw in the video is still going to take place. It's just shifted in terms of who is doing the inviting now and who uh, will be in charge of receiving us. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, on the line also, we have um, Reverend Dr. Lee, and um, can you introduce how you met this brother and what he has to, what role he plays in this whole uh, operation of Bishop Ellaby? Well, I would like him, in his introduction, to begin with how we met and go into the fullness of why we're sitting here together. So over to Dr. Lee. Yes, sir. I work for the uh, one of the large uh, retail uh, pharmaceutical firms in Dallas, and uh, one of uh, Bishop Ellaby's, uh, one of the church pastors, uh, walked into uh, my establishment one day and said, will you come to a meeting? We're having a gathering at the church and we'd love to have you come down, and we're going to have one of our great bishops from Africa to come uh, and be our guest that day, and we'd love for you to come down and meet him. And uh, so, uh, well enough, I did go to church that Sunday uh, at uh, Bishop's Church, and, uh, of course, I did meet Bishop there uh, while on the premises, and we began to talk. And I learned of this great movement uh, back to Africa called Promised Land, and I learned of the AFON group. Well, Africa has always been uh, my desire as well, and the mission has always been the same as his, never knowing it. My experiences with Africa go back uh, with Dr. Leon Sullivan and his group called IFESH, mm. the International Foundation for Education and self Yes. Yes, And uh, there were many of us involved with IFS back years ago, and as you might recall, uh, we used to go somewhere in Africa every two years That's for right. an Africa, African-American conference. And so I got my introduction to Africa uh, through Dr. Sullivan's ventures uh, in IFES. 
And, of course, I've continued to go now for the last 30 years uh, somewhere in Africa. I actually have lived in Nigeria uh, in some of the places you all are talking about for about three and a half years. Uh, I went in in Lagos, and I traveled all over the country. Uh, I went in uh, just uh, uh, after uh, Sonny Abacha took over the government in Nigeria, was there doing the coup, and uh, stayed through it. Uh, until uh, that interim president died uh, and the Abubakar administration came into office uh, as as interim president. And then from the time Abubakar left office to uh, the time that President Obasan Joe became uh, the first Democratic elected uh, president, I was there in Nigeria uh, building churches and moving around from place to place, trying to learn the African culture there in Nigeria. I did get a chance to travel to Aquabum. I traveled to Ibadan, of course, all around Lagos uh, and those areas around Lagos uh, like Ikeja and Ikoyi and Leki and Victoria Island, and then on down into the south-south, uh, into Port Harcourt uh, and so forth in the east, and on down into Onquiry, uh down in the Delta, and many of the areas that he's talking about uh, there in uh, in the Delta, I was able to travel down to those places um, uh, in buses and in cars. So I've walked much of the ground that he, he's discussing. When he asked me to become a part uh, of the team uh, and bring my enormous experience in government and technology, of course, I agreed right away. And so we began to fashion uh, a proposal for uh, the present governor of Aquaipa. Wow. Well, it is a great honor to be in the presence of both of you gentlemen, and um, I, I would like to extend this conversation uh, based on some of the current events taking place in Nigeria, which um, we would like to get a report from both of you on um, concerning this um, uprising with the Muslims and the Christians and and the attack on, on different people's uh, sanctuaries and everything. Um, without without um, giving any type of biblical references, can I get your personal uh, dialogue on what you think this is all about and where this is going and where it won't go? Yes, well, my poor take on that is the Bible is fulfilling itself in all categories. There are wars and there's rumors of wars. Nation is rising up against nation. Kingdom is against kingdom. The northern part of Nigeria ruled the government for 26 years, and uh, it was military operated. And now in order to try to bring the military back into action, there have to be something that looks like the civil government cannot take care of. So they have to reinstate the military government. To me, it's dumb Mm -hmm. that people will blow up themselves and kill innocent people. And it's no Koran, no Bible, no uh, Talmud, no Torah, no holy book that introduce such stupidity. So I believe it's a political ploy, barbarically done, to try to get the military to take over again, which would be the Hausa, basically, in the north. And uh, I have been told by one of the great leaders of the Islamic world, the Sultan of Sokoto, the uh, Emir of Kano, the Emir of Zaza, say that this money is being shipped in from Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and such, to get the youth to create these jihad or whatever they want to call it, but that the true leadership of the Muslims is not behind it. So whatever the case may be, it will not last. There's a prophecy that's given by a great leader in Nigeria that there will be no more coup, and since he has spoken it, there has not been. There will be no more civil war So whatever evils are trying to get in through an evil plot, it will not last. 
and it will not stop Africa's diaspora children from going home. That's good news. If I would That's add any my take on it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm That's not going to fear any fear evil. No thing. evil. That's right. Absolutely. It is written. We will go back to our father's land with great substance and die of a ripe old age, meaning we're going home peacefully and we will live peacefully until death. Okay. And and with um, a discussion from you, uh, Reverend uh, Dr. Lee, we, we talked at length um, about your travels in Africa and your experiences with um, uh, uprisings and all like so. I think you were there for uh, long months over the time that you intended to be because of some uprising and everything. Can you give us yes. your take on um, <clears throat> where we have come from, where we are, and where we're going in terms of stabilization uh, of the African um, uh, Nigerian cont- country? Uh, absolutely. I think mine, looking at it from a political perspective and a religious ex- uh, uh, perspective, are these. Uh, as you know, in the past uh, three or four years, Nigeria, uh, which is the most populous country in all of Africa, uh, its credit rating has gotten substantially stronger. They have paid uh, the majority of their foreign debt off. The credit rating is the highest that's it, that it's ever been uh, on the Fitch report. Uh, that makes Nigeria a very prosperous uh, country. Because it has made Nigeria a very prosperous country, the Nigerian influence uh, at the head of ECOWAS, which is all of the African countries, Mm -hmm. uh, has now become one of unity all across the African spectrum. All of the countries that are there are modeling after Nigeria, uh, especially the oil-rich nations and the mineral-rich nations. They are changing their focus on uh, paying off or liquidating as much of the foreign debt as absolutely possible and then freeing themselves uh, of control by the World Bank. Uh, as you know, simultaneously going on in Africa is extreme marginalization by the World Bank to prevent that from happening. Uh, as a process, uh, they want to devalue uh, Nigerian currency again and to devalue those currencies that are getting stronger. The purpose for that is this. All of the major foreign powers are represented in Africa today. That's right. There is a a breaking up of the African continent between the United States and between China. The Koreans are moving over there now looking for land. The Lebanese have been there for years. And, uh, And many nations are coming to Africa already uh, to devour the resources. If you check the economic impact there, all of the fiasco uh, with all of the money issues in the United States, uh, with our hedge funds and all of those junk bonds and everything, most of those funds ended up in Africa. There are there are more uh, uh, bond funds in Africa uh, than you could imagine. Real estate is being purchased everywhere in Africa. Uh, uh, through those bond funds that were in the housing market and all of that money that was lost on Wall Street was not really lost. It was actually transferred into Africa and purchased real estate, big agricultural real estate, big mineral real estate. All of that is being done. Now, uh, there is a grabbing. There's a massive land grabbing going on in Africa everywhere, uh, starting in the Sudan. Uh, The United States is there, all of the churches, everybody you know uh, is is in Sudan and in Burundi uh, and in uh, Uganda. They're all in the Delta and everywhere else that you find in Africa uh, because of the massive wealth that is there. And also everybody is locating strategically in Africa. Hmm. Now, the only players that are not participating in that is African Americans. Hmm. Amen. Uh, mm. We have almost a trillion dollar in net assets in the United States owned by African Americans. Those assets are not being leveraged in Africa uh, like uh, the other countries that are there. When Africans need to borrow money, they can't just go straight to the World Bank through USAID 
or through uh, any of the uh, consortiums like EBRD that does money uh, represent the United States in World Bank lending, they can't go to those countries. They actually still have to go to their colonial masters. Uh, in the case of the uh, English-speaking folks there, they have to go to Britain. Hmm. If they're French-speaking, if they're Francophone, they still have to go to they're France. France. Yeah. If they are, if they're uh, Scandinavian, they still have to go to Belgium. Consequently, whenever those countries want to borrow money, they still have to go to those colonial masters. When those countries need to raise cash, they go back to Africa and begin to squeeze African countries to devalue their currency so that they can leverage their go their government paper. Uh, against those assets that they hold in Africa, in the real estate, in the mining, in all of those assets that, that are there. That's what's going on in Africa right now. What is being called a religious issue is not a religious issue at all. That's a camouflage. That's a yeah. camouflage. That's right. That's a camouflage. Mm. Uh, there's nothing uh, that separates religion except poverty. Mm. And uh, the more they squeeze uh, all of the currency out of our systems there, uh, the, the the more we're going to fight because of poverty. There's no different than, uh, than here in the United States. When jobs and the economic situation in the U.S. declines, racism goes up. Hmm. The Klan comes out, and you don't ever hear from them until the economy gets tight. Wow. Well, the same technique is happening in Africa. Whenever money needs to be raised, uh, then there's a fight for money. It's not really religious. It's a fight for money, and because... Uh, the money that is in Africa now is being controlled uh, by those that are in power. Uh, everybody wants a piece of that. And so okay, what we so think is a religious war is not a religious war at all. Those guys like Bamingida up in the north and all of those emirs up in Kano and Kaduna and all these other places and just and, and all of that, as uh, Bishop has said, has been running this thing for 26 years. And in the past six years, they have not been, you know, milking the old cow. So they want so to get back same, in that milk for cow. So it's the same because story the all over. Because become very prosperous. Yes. Same story all over. Um, yes. Conquer and divide. Divide and conquer. That's it. Make poverty, create poverty, create war and, and a crisis. But if you if you go to those countries right now, if you go to a place like Lagos that has uh, 15 million people, you'll find three, four, five million whites that are there. They don't care what the climate is. Yeah, they definitely don't. If you go down to Aquilum in the Delta, where all the major corporations are operating down there, whites walk freely on the street, yes. and they'll cross land walking. Yes. And we're afraid to fly over there. Mm. I'm, I'm so right. happy that don't you're we? bringing this out, because yeah. uh, I've talked with many people, and uh, the fear set in immediately. Oh, I heard that there was some... A war and 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 people getting killed and like so and I wouldn't want to go there now. I mean, is it going to be safe and all like so? I am so happy that you're bringing this out. Seven forty-seven That's DC tens air buses. Seven fifty-seven are loaded. Ninety percent white. That's correct. Uh, That's it. Our biggest enemy is the State Department as our embassy in those countries that issue those warning reports. We have to get, and that's what Dr. Sullivan tried to prove to everybody. You need to go see for yourself, no matter what the climate is. Go. And in Africa, we have a saying, go. <laughs> okay? Yes, that is the is. only way you're going to determine uh, that Africa is definitely the place that you want to be. Uh, as soon as I can get on the plane, I'm headed to Africa, and I'm retiring there in just a couple of months or so. Thank you very much. Nothing is going to stop me from getting there. Amen. You know, uh, both of you have cleared up a lot. We've, we've covered a lot of territory. We want to close it out with a final um, closing statement of um, what is the next step and what do we all need to do, what page do we need to be on in terms of making this next step and this next move? Well, from my point uh, standpoint, we have made an arrangement and we have been given a signal of Governor uh, God's will of Fabio that in March, the only thing he did not give us the exactness of the time, 
and it's hard to get people from Nigeria to do that. I don't know whether it's because of the FNC, but people will tell you, oh, I'm coming. You say, when? They will not give you the date, the place, or the time. But he says in March. So our preparation is to get everyone on deck and let them be able to know what they bring to the table to be able to fulfill the hopes of this governor, that the first welcome village for the Africans in the diaspora will be in a Kwaibum state. And he wants it done in his tenure as governor. So we want to get as ready as we can for March. And whenever we come here, he will find out that we are organized and we have what it takes to carry out the mission. That's my take on that. Very good. And your closing Hassan. statement. Hassan? Yes. I would recommend that any and every African American that is serious about Africa uh, save twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars on their own and plan to make a trip to Africa, whether it be Liberia, Nigeria, or Uganda, or wherever. The reason we love this location is that's where slavery began in Africa for us. Is off the coast uh, of uh, Aquaibum uh, and Calabar, and, and, and okay, that Guinea man you talked about. Uh, this is the location, all up in Senegal and oh, in Ghana. But it begins at this promised land. Yes. We now have an opportunity to go back there and do something constructive. We don't want to go to Africa the way we typically approach what we do even here in the United States. If we go looking for a government contract, if we go looking for, you know, uh, some big deal to go down, I think we're going to miss the point. This is an opportunity for us to come together and invest together and be given the necessary government support and infrastructure to make those dreams happen. Now, for those that do not want to go to Africa and want to remain in the United States, then let's find a way to link our two economies. The reason the Asians are successful is because I think we lost him. Hello? Yes, we're here. Oh, oh. The reason Asians are successful is because they link with their country. The Europeans link with their countries. The Hispanics link with their countries, and so you have a massive economy that's in the set. With African Americans, we try to live in our little neighborhood, and we don't trust one another. We don't invest together. This is an opportunity for us to use the awesome, massive assets that we have here in America in the hands of African Americans, joining those that are our partners of other groups and utilizing both technology, resources, and money in Africa to begin to build us a homeland and a solid base that we can connect to repeatedly. This is that opportunity to do it like it's never been done before, and we have the uh, help of a governor there that is willing to step out on a limb to make it happen. All right, then. Well, you heard it first, live and direct, on WACP. TV, the place to be, for we are creative people. And we're, we're going to continue this conversation um, with those members who are already signed up to WACPTV.ning.com. We want you to come to this conversation by way of uh, posting right um, underneath this logo where you've heard this message. We want you to comment, ask questions, and your questions will be answered by one of these two gentlemen. We are all members of the WACP-TV community online, and you can get answers to your questions. So um, if you're on YouTube and you're listening to this message, uh, join our community at WACPTV.ning.com and come on and let's get together 
and do the right thing, as Spike Lee said. Signing out, WACP TV. I've been your host and tour guide, Hassan, Hassan Ortiz Rahim. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed life. Peace.